Hello, oh, Spin Snaker here with another figure review. Today we have got playing on your YouTube DC Collectibles Arrow Action Figure Two Pack Oliver Queen and Deathstroke. Boom, baby. Now, I've got to straight off the bat give a massive, and I mean a massive, thank you and shout out to Mr. Martin. I actually don't know his last name. But those of you, <laughs> Martin might just seem like a bit of a, just a name that's thrown out there. Basically, you guys saw in my box open a couple of videos back that I got uh, two massive one quarter scale uh, Superman and Batman. And I also got the Arrow Season 1 Blu-ray. Now, while I have seen all these episodes of Arrow um, from start to finish, I am watching that Blu-ray again, and I forgot how good the start of this season is, even though I'm not a big fan of uh, Oliver's makeup. But it's made me decide to actually finally bite the bullet and get this pack. Now, unfortunately, this pack has become ridiculously rare, and I swear to God, I, sw I saw it only like a month ago for about £40. Now, you cannot find it anywhere. eBay is £100 plus. Amazon, £100 plus. No one in my Facebook group had it. So I did some calling around and I got through to a Forbidden Planet in Bristol. And I spoke to a lovely gentleman there called Martin. Who basically said to me that they do have it in stock. It's the only one they've got in stock. And it was £49.99. I said, that's awesome, but you guys don't post, do you? And they said, unfortunately, no, we don't post out. If you want to get something via post, you have to use our website. The website didn't have them in stock. So what he did for me, he went above and beyond. He spoke to his manager, explained the situation. This was the last one they had in stock, wasn't available online. And he spoke to his manager, and his manager actually agreed to do a one-time only, I want to elaborate, one-time only, posted this out to me, and it arrived today blown away by that level of customer services you know they, they went above and beyond someone in the shop went and posted this and to me so Martin you sir are awesome and I cannot thank you enough so that's how I've acquired this lovely little package I even this little post-it don't know if you can read this all the best from Forbidden Planet Bristol Martin that's how cool he is and that's how blown away I am at just what they've done for me today and I got this for $49.99 and that was it they paid for postage they paid for everything so they're amazing so don't expect this from every Forbidden Planet like I said this was a one time thing so I just want to make that absolutely crystal clear but I'm proper stoked and blown away and I said did say going to give them a massive shout out so again thank you thank you and a thank you now let's uh, lose a little post-it and let's actually go over these figures. And let's actually go over these figures. Okay, so I just want to actually go over this one little thing that's a little bit of a nitpick to me. Now, the before we look at the packaging thing, just want to show it does say Oliver, Queen, and Deathstroke. Now, I'm going to give a bit of a spoiler here. So if anyone doesn't want to know a spoiler, you want to fast forward ahead about 30 seconds. That isn't Oliver Queen. That's the Hood, or the Archer, or the Vigilante, a.k.a. Green Arrow. And this isn't Deathstroke. Deathstroke is Slade Wilson. This is someone called Billy Wintergreen. So, slight little spoiler there. You watch the series, you'll find out why. But still, very, very cool figure to have. And that's why I got him. Because this figure looks awesome. Okay, so let's have a look at this packaging. As you can see, standard DC collectibles packaging. You have a nice big open window with a logo down the bottom. You have the Arrow TV series logo there. Action figure 2 pack. At the top says, based on the CW TV show. Warning, sir. In the background you can see a picture of the skyline, which is pretty cool. I'll try and show that when we get it out of the box if it comes out. And then over the transparentness you can see Olive Queen and Deathstroke. Looking at the top of the box you see DC Comics Arrow's Action Figure 2 back. Looking on the back of the box or on the side of the box you have a picture of Arrow, DC Comics Arrow, Olive Queen and Deathstroke Action Figure 2 pack DC Collectibles. That's a mouthful. A picture of Olive Queen in his costume minus the eye makeup. On the back here we have it, based on the hit show, seen only on the CW. Which is not true, because, you know, we've got it over here, 
um, we've got it online, you can buy it on Blu-ray, so that's not true. And we do have a little bio here, I will hold this here, and if you want to read that, feel free. Justice hits it mark. And then on the back of the packaging you have a picture of a nice little portrait, same on the side here, and then a picture of the figure, the archer, and Deathstroke. Bomb, barcodes, and whatnot. So, let's crack into this and get these bad boys open, as I am super excited! <laughs> And we are back with this duo out of the box. What do we think? Well, it's kind of a bit hit and miss to be honest. I think it's a bit stupid that Deathstroke is definitely quite far the stronger figure of the two. With better accessories, better paint apps and better articulation. Having said, the, the Arrow figure isn't a bad figure, just... I definitely think the Deathstroke figure is better of the two. So quick look at that backdrop. Like I said, it's just a cityscape here. It's pretty nice. Nothing really wow in it. It's a nice little thing. Don't know if you could use it in a display piece. You could kind of make it look like a bit out of a, a window, skyscraper, something like that. Okay, so let's take a close look at these figures and their accessories. Okay, so it's for the bow. As you can see, this is actually very good to how it appears in the actual show in the first season and it is really nice it has some nice detail in it nice texture and some nice sculpt all these bandages going around are sculpted really well you've got the gold kind of finger guards there again really really well very nice everything about it is actually really well done even the bowstring is really well done it's kind of an interesting design for a bow i thought it was a unique take considering the classic comic book is green so I thought it was weird that he went for that but I do like it personally not my favorite kind of design for bows but like I said it is a good cool bow and it does work well in the show he then comes with a total of well I guess like three separate arrows let's say that you have two individual arrows and then there's clumping of arrows which do fit in his quiver now mine unfortunately have got a bit warped in the packaging so i'm gonna have to kind of heat them up i think there's a total of six i counted here clumped together i might be wrong on that and then you've got two individual ones which like that again they're a bit warped unfortunately you can just about fit all of these in his quiver and i'll show you that in a bit but they're very very well sculpted with a green and yellow feathers and a green arrowhead and then they're very a kind of a firm plastic but they do have a bit of ply in them as you can see and then the clump in there then the last really accessory or additional items that arrow comes with is an extra pair of hands it comes with two fist hands and then the arrow opening hands. I'll show you them in a sec. One thing I think is weird is these are both fist hands, but this one is hinged to go up and down like that. This is right hand, but then his left hand is hinged to go up and down like that. Very weird that they do that. I don't know why. They should, as fists, I guess they should both be hinged like that. Strange. But if I show you these compared to the other ones, his left hand, as you can see, is designed to hold the actual bow, and then his right hand is to hold the jawstring. This one again hinged up and down like that. And this one is like that. Honestly, there's a nice kind of bit of like shade into these, but his gloves are just meant to be a uh, dark green or a black, so they look okay for what they are. It is cool that we did get some fighting gloves and some archery gloves. Okay, so for the actual figure, as you can see, he does come with his classic hood, which is really nice. Now, if I bring the hood back, it does go all the way back, but it's quite a thick rubber, so it doesn't really stay back. And the likeness to the actor is not terrible in my opinion. I don't think it may be the best, but I do think it's not bad. And as you can see, he's got the makeup that you see in the first season. Putting the hood back on, it does look very good and very accurate to how it appears in the show. I am actually currently watching season one, as I said, and I've literally just noticed this flap here. And I was wondering, he doesn't really have that, does he? But no, sure enough, he does. So it's very, very cool. You can see that he's got the zip there and the strap going around his chest. All looks absolutely amazing. 
continuing the zip going down it's all a solid green now though it's not really coming up on camera there is some wash going in this green and it does look very nice looking around to the side of his leather coat whatever you want to call it as you can see he does have a few arrows here on his sleeve which he does use throughout the show for throwing arrows and then here you just have some arrow kind of designs another side pocket here of arrows here which is half full I don't know if these are throwing arrows or once he shoots. I'm sure I saw him grab one from here and put it in his bow, but these would be too small, you know, to, to use in a bow and arrow. I'm not too sure. But these are all a soft rubber. Well, it's still light. The pockets are soft rubber and the arrows are actually quite a hard part. His little pockets that you see in the actual show, they're in there. Don't actually see him use them, but you see him on his outfit. Okay, so my first gripe of this figure is the hips. Now, normally it's the hip articulation, but it's the look of these hips. I mean, look at that. You can see right through to the figure, and I think that is terrible. Big gaping gapes like that, and the worst part is they don't even really help with the articulation. The joint of his, like, thigh or pelvic or bum, whatever you want to call it, is so wide that the articulation is very limited and I will show that in the articulation in a bit. Continue down again you can see some more of that detail in the actual costume strap there which is just supposed to be attached to obviously then that nice kind of like arrowy look on the bottom of the legs and then his little booties. I always thought his little booties are kind of weird they're very unique and interesting. He does have a peg hole in his boots and he does have treads but also you have the uh, trade copyright logos there as well Coming around to the back of the character, and you can see his boots are a lot flatter at the back, not much really to go for them. Then there's also a really dark green on the back of his calves. Didn't notice that before in the show. Continuing up, you can see again that pocket from the side, which being, continues under his jacket. And then the detail, if I actually bend him forward a bit, on his lower back, I've never noticed that in the show, and I think that is really nice. I don't know if that's accurate. Generally DC collectibles should be quite accurate on one of their own shows, but I do really like that. I think it's very, very nice. And I showed you where the quiver, and then you have this really nice detail in the actual hood. I don't recall noticing that in the actual show. Um, I think it's just generally that it's a lot darker in the show compared to the actual figure. But the hood, again, is sculpted really, really well, and the whole thing is one piece. From the top of the hood all the way to the shoulders, all one piece and it is a softer rubber so it doesn't really hint at articulation although if you want to get Ollie here to turn to the left or right you can look him in the hood but you can't turn the hood with him it just doesn't work much like the um, what was it called the Arkham Anarchy figure very much like that okay size comparison okay this figure stands at roughly Literally just shy of 7 inches tall. I'm not going to do any comparisons in this video as I have two figures to review. But stands in next to Deathstroke. And you can see they're roughly the same height. If anything I would say that Mr. Queen here is taller. I'm going to try something here. I'm going to try changing my filter on my camera because I'm trying out this other one and I'm just not sure I like it. So bear with me. So what do you guys think looks better? Filter number two is this one which I normally use for pretty much all my videos. Unless I uh, accidentally put it on the other filter. Or the first filter. Filter number one. Which one do you think looks better? I generally can't make my mind up. Hopefully I might be getting a new camera soon anyway so I might have to take out this uh, variable. Okay, so continuing with this figure, let's have a look at his articulation. So for articulation, the head, if I bring the hood back, is on a double ball peg, and it can go from left to right, and it can go up that much, down that much. You can rotate around 360 degrees. You just have to work with the hood, because obviously this is a thick, quite a thick rubber, and it's very stuck in that location, so you are going to have to work with it when you want to articulate around it. Now, Something to add is this is a separate piece and you can remove it by removing the upper torso But I haven't done it yet, and I don't really want to So I'm happy to keep it on there now the shoulders are on board. now like I said this is a softer rubber So it won't get it hindered at all really As you can see straight up it's not been hindered by the rubber it's been hindered by the actual sculpt So you can rotate around 360 degrees you can go out that far 
and then you have an elbow rotation of 360 degrees single bend of the elbow of about 90 it's probably slightly better than 90 but then the more you go around the less you get now on his right wrist it goes up and down like that angle with both wrists and you can rotate it around a 360 degrees and then on his left wrist you can go up and down from there to there and then rotate around 360 degrees now he has a diaphragm joint so he can go forward that much back that much you can rotate from there to there and you can pivot from there to there nothing in the waist this is all it's like two separate pieces but it's not going to move then he has t-cut hips but they're kind of dcuc now if you put this part here underneath here you do get a better range of articulation but that's still his spartum and when you do that it does tend to chew up this part here which is not good you see how that's gone away and then you can do a split of that but then you get this what on earth is that that looks very weird very very weird I don't know what to make of that that just looks unnatural doesn't look too bad when you're standing up but the second you spread them apart it looks weird then has a rotation above the knee of 360 degrees and then a single bend of the knee of about 90 maybe just shy of 90 but then as you rotate it round the less you get it then has a rotation above the boot just here 360 degrees and you can have an ankle point from there to there with a pivot from there to there and this is an off pivot so it's kind of going into the foot so that's pretty good Deathstroke unfortunately is a straight down pivot but I'll show you that in a minute okay so to get him to hold his bow I think is a bit awkward to be honest now I'm not 100% on this but I'm pretty sure this part here goes to the top of the bow the brown part and then the best way to do it is kind of push the back of it in and then kind of work with the fingers now it's definitely easier this time round this is only the second time I've put it in his hand. The first time round was very difficult and had to really kind of force it. Now, the only other problem I have is to actually get him to do an archery position. Generally, you should have the arm outstretched and this one close to his face to show the position. But you can't really get this one any closer than that. And then when you pull the cord... because of the angle of this joint you can't really get the wrist in any closer than that so even if you angle it out like that it just doesn't really look right see but that's about the best you can do and that's with his hand facing the wrong way if you have it this way then when you put the cord on it it just snaps You can kind of wedge it in the bottom finger, like that. That's not too bad, that's about the best you're going to get. But even then it's not brilliant. And then you can get one of these arrows, and if you go behind the bow, and you can feed it in between the top finger like that. That's about the best you can do. Which is not terrible, but still I would prefer something a bit better in my opinion. The quiver on the back is very small, and like I said, you can fit these in there. So there's the bunch, and then you can also fit the rest of them. Now one thing to note is, in my opinion, I think they might stick out a bit far. I think in the show's quiver might be a bit longer, because it feels like they barely go in there. But... Once they're all in there, they're quite in there quite firm, and you can pretty much turn them upside down. I thought this was going to be a rubber, but it's actually a solid plastic, which is interesting. So honestly, it's not too bad. Now, to change hands out, you just pull like that, and then put in the new ones. Now, my left one is firm but works. My right one, unfortunately, very easy and it just pops out. I have heated this and let it cool, but it's not really lasted that long. But then you can have him doing any kind of like 
fight poses where he's about to punch someone. Okay, as for Deathstroke, Deathstroke comes with quite a few accessories himself. He comes with his little machine gun, which I'm not 100% on. I think it's a scar. I don't know, with an uncarriage grenade launcher. Very nicely done. Nice detail to it. Nice sculpt. Uh, paint up is quite simple. Solid black with his like goldy bronze part on the actual barrel itself. Really nice. And he does hold it really well with his gun hand. He then comes with this Desert Eagle, again really nice, a very solid color, very flat for a Desert Eagle, I think that's a bit interesting. Desert Eagles and figures are generally a lot chunkier than this, but still it's a nice design and it does look pretty good. Nice enough sculpt and it does hold it really well. The problem is having a Desert Eagle on a toy, because the handles are so much bigger, it does kind of stretch that grip out if you have it in there for longer than two seconds. Then he comes with his knife, really really nice. Simple, but nice. Silver blade with black grip. Very nice. And he holds this really nice in his gripping hand on the left. And of course, his probably most notable accessory is the sword. This one is really nice, really well done, and very, very accurate to how it comes on the show. Literally like it's taken straight from the screen. The grip, while painted and sculpted, is really, really nice, and everything else is just a gun metal. All these weapons do have a holster, and I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so as for Deathstroke himself, he has these truly menacing eyes. If I bring that light in a bit more, you can really see those eyes. Very red, very I don't know, popping. They look really, really cool. The whole sculpt on the head is really, really nice and very well done. Simple, but there's quite a bit of paint variance in the actual yellow there, which is not really coming over that well. In fact, it looks a bit stretched almost, but it's really not coming through on camera. All in all, the head looks absolutely phenomenal. It's those eyes just so piercing. Now, continuing down, you can see he has these grenade pouches on the front here, which is attached to the same strap as the sheath for his sword. But this is a separate piece, and it is removable if you like. You just need to lift the left arm, a uh, right arm up, sorry, and it'll pop straight off. But I'm leaving it on there because I just think it looks cool. His body armor looks absolutely amazing. And again, just like it's something ripped straight out of the actual movie. All these straps are really well sculpted and they go underneath the actual armour. The armour on the shoulders is really well done and it actually slides underneath the torso very well which I will show you in articulation. Has his elbow strap for an elbow pad on his left arm but not on his right arm. Just has the straps which I think is a bit weird. As you see what I said with the green arrow, there's a bit of scuff in there where I've lifted his leg up, unfortunately. But like I said, this is uh, sculpted all the way under his chest, so it looks really, really nice. Continuing down, you can see the armour on the actual boots looks very, very nice. And again, there's the sheath for his knife, and that's the holster for his pistol there. The boots have some nice sculpt to them, and they do look quite grubby and dirty, so it's really well done on them. So, have a look at the back figure again. You can see the dirt going throughout the boots which is weird that they're a different color on the soles than it is to the rest of the boot but if you scroll up a bit more you can see that there's some nice like gray shading going on the calves there and then the straps for his boots and his armor really nice straps going around the back of the legs for his kneecaps his kneecaps his knee pads even then continue up like i said you can see the holster there for his pistol some more pockets on the back of his trousers some more straps and then the sheath and the armor and a closer look there at his elbow pad okay so have a look at his accessories he can does hold them all really well now for starters his pistol he holds it really well in his right hand if you kind of wedge it in at an angle and then line that trigger finger up and there you go, it pops in there just fine, and then he holds up really well. Now, like with Oliver, this one has an up and down motion. In fact, I think both his hands do. That's right, both his hands have an up and down instead of an in and out pivot. So you can get some kind of like gangster stuff going on there if you really wanted to. But all in all, you can get him to hold that with some great accuracy and some great poses. You can even get some Metal Gear Solid stuff going in there. Failing that, he does have storage for his pistol. Take that off, and then on his right leg, he has a holster for his gun. Grabbing his knife, 
you can fit this in his left hand it goes in upside down if you want or you can put it in there right side up if I can get it out it's kind of to work with that little notch at the back there however you see fit so you can hold that knife really well this goes in on his leg now there's a little notch missing on the back of it so but there's no like real shape so personally I think it goes in with the blade facing that way just like there's a notch ready for it the other accessory he has storage for is his sword now you can fit this in both hands he holds it much better in his left hand and you can get a sword point from it like that obviously with his right hand being wider for the weapons it kind of holds that a bit loose so not so much which is a shame because the design of the sheath it is meant to be held by his right hand as you can see but the sheath on the back does hold that really nice and as I said if I lift his arm up that is removable but then you're losing the grenades and the cool sheath the only weapon he doesn't have storage for is his assault rifle. You could probably put a strap around it and then put it around his back or maybe even tuck it under here if you really wanted some storage for it. But you can just get him to hold that fine. Like the pistol, you have to work with his little finger or his trigger finger to line it upright. And that I find is the hardest thing. But once you get it in his hand, it's fine and he holds it just fine. can't really, he probably could stretch these things around to hold the undercarriage but I don't like to do it so what I do is I put his thumb and poke it through that trigger there so it looks like he's holding it and ready to fire his grenade and then we have Deathstroke ready for action Deathstroke stands at like 6 and 3 quarter inches tall standing next to the archer and while they do look a bit bigger on camera, they are roughly the same height. I do think the archer might have a bit more height in shoulders. And that hood does make him look a bit taller. But generally they're about the same height. Okay, articulation. Now, when I took this out, his head was actually stuck. But I hair dried it for a few seconds and it did pop off, so it's fine. Basically, this joint here was stuck, so it was kind of like that. Which means I could still look around, but everything was at that weird kind of angle. But now it works fine. So you can see he looks down that much up that much and everything's gone blurry try it again so you can look down that much up that much you can pivot from side to side and you can rotate it around 360 degrees the shoulders and borders they can go around 360 degrees and this is the bit I told you about the armor look it goes underneath there how cool is that I think that's really good but they go out that far and that's all the way around that's underneath I really like that it doesn't look like there's a massive gap so they've done that really well he has a cut just above the elbow here of 360 degrees, then a single bend in the elbow, but you get better than 90, so very impressed with that. Rotation in the wrist of 360 degrees, then like I said, you can point from there to there, same on the other side. Now, he has an upper diaphragm joint, but this one I'm finding quite stiff, can't really do much with it. That's forward, and like that's back, so you don't really get much forward and back in it. You get a bit of left and a bit of right, and then you can rotate it. You could go around 360 degrees on that. DCUC split cut, uh, DCUC T cut hips. So he has a Spartan of that. So not quite massive, but like I said, as you put that underneath there, not too bad on this leg, but this one is chipping away. And then he has a split of just that. And the gape's not too bad, but still looks very weird. Now, they have split. They have an upper thigh rotation. This one is just here above the pocket, whereas this one is at the strap. So you can rotate that around 360 degrees, but you do need to work with that gun. And then there's a double bend in the knee, which I think is really, really nice. Really like that it did that. No boot rotation, and then you have ankle point from there. To there and then you have an ankle rotation but it's almost straight down as you see so you can rotate that around 360 degrees but 
it's going to look weird getting pivots like that. But still, it's a nice addition. Okay, guys, so final thoughts. Would I recommend these figures? Honestly, if you're a fan of the show, then yes, I think they're great figures. But unfortunately, right now, good luck finding them cheap. I really wish I picked them up when they were a lot cheaper, and I'm hoping to get the rest of the actual Arrow and the Flash figures brand new now while they are cheap. I definitely think these are worth picking up. I don't know... I do think it's weird, like I said, that the death joke in my opinion is definitely the stronger of the two figures. I don't like his knee articulation. I don't like his hips. I think they're very gapy, very... They could have been so much better and so much easier. And I don't like the fact they can't really hold his bow properly and do a decent arrow shot. Apart from that, I love the paint apps. I love the sculpt. I love the accessories. And I do really think this is a good enough, a good figure. This thing is phenomenal. The only gripe I really have with this one is... I guess two. Hips, I wish you had a bit better range. And I wish that torso had a bit better range. Apart from that, love this figure. I think... Oh, sorry about that. I love this figure and I think it is phenomenal. So, would I recommend these? Yes, in a nutshell. Anyway guys, that is my review. I thought I'd show you him without his actual sheath, so see what he's like. Just to go... There you go, you can see he does actually look pretty badass, even though he hasn't got a sheath on. There you go. So, like I said, anyway guys, that is my review. Again, I'd like to put a massive thank you out to Martin and your management in Forbidden Planet in Bristol. If you live near Bristol, please check them out, as they did me... Massive favouritists and I can't praise them enough. Such amazing people there. Again, I can't fault them enough. Lovely people. But failing that, good luck trying to find these guys if you'd like them. There will be some future Arrow figures coming out. You can get this guy by himself shortly with the mask. Apart from that, I think he comes the same. Maybe with a different bow. And this guy is getting kind of a re-release with the new Deathstroke. That's what I'm really saying. You can also get the Canary, um, Flash... I think I even saw the Dark Archer and I saw Deadshot, I think, coming out. I feel like I'm forgetting someone. Oh, that's right. You can get Olive Queen shirtless. <laughs> if you'd like to check them out, check out JC. I'll put a link in the description below. He's already done Black Canary and Oliver Queen. Anyway, guys, that is my review. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I've actually quite enjoyed making this and these ones have been very, very cool. So, as usual, guys, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to contact me, please contact me via my Facebook. There will be a link in the description below. If you have any comments you'd like to add about these figures on my channel, please leave them down below also. And as usual, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Keep collecting, and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye-bye.